Today we're checking out Shiori. She has a pretty interesting kit, focusing a lot on coordinated attacks, which is kind of rare in the Geo space. First, of course, we gotta start with leveling her up. While we're leveling her up, here's a quick overview of the materials she needs. On the left, we have the materials required per ascension, and on the bottom, we have the total cost from zero to 90. In terms of talents, I would say they're all important, probably mostly so her skill though, followed by her burst. Her basic might not be important depending on how you wanna play with her, but she can give herself a Geo infusion, so potentially her basics can be strong. We We'll of course learn more in her talent and constellation review in a second here, but for now I'm just going to raise them all to six. Also do want to give a quick thanks to Genshin Impact for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and do the talent and constellation review. Basic attacks are pretty basic for now, she will be slashing about. I do of course want to mention though that she's dual wielding and I think that's amazing. The sword you equip plus like the special weapon she always has, pretty sure it doesn't make an actual difference in her kit, I just think it looks cool visually. Besides that for a sword user, normal and charged are pretty standard. Again, I definitely feel like her elemental skill is the core of her kit here. Her elemental skill can branch off in a couple different ways, but first and foremost, it is an attack. She dashes forward, slicing with Geo. At the same time, she'll summon a little doll. You can consider this doll to be essentially like one of Farina's summons. These are not coordinated attacks. The doll will attack on its own, which I feel like is generally superior because there are some main DPSs that don't do normal attacks enough to really take advantage of coordinated attacks. The doll does attack pretty slow every 3.6 seconds, but the duration is a little bit longer than the actual cooldown, so you can have the doll constantly. In addition to that, if there's a Geo Construct nearby like Albedo Flower, Zhongli Pillar, etc., she will summon two of these dolls at once. And then naturally you have twice as many attacks going off. We're still not done with her E though, because two different things can happen after using her elemental skill. If you press her elemental skill again, you immediately switch to the next character in your lineup. And since you can hold and aim her elemental skill, you can swap characters in the air to do a plunge attack with your next. In addition to that, the doll she summons will do two special coordinated attacks dealing the full amount of damage from her elemental skill, which is almost twice as strong as the doll's standard attacks. If you instead normal attack, she'll gain a Geo Infusion for five seconds, turning her into a bit of a main DPS for a bit. Her elemental burst or ultimate seems to be pretty much completely separated from her skill. It's just a strong Geo attack, period. And her second passive does relate somewhat to her skill, but she'll also gain a 20% Geo damage bonus for 20 seconds when someone creates a Geo construct. So that should be a pretty much 100 percent uptime buff there. And finally, her exploration ability, 10% movement speed, as long as at least one person in your team has a non-default wind glider or outfit. One thing we haven't really talked about is the fact Chiori split scales. She scales with attack and death. Generally, this is somewhat frowned upon, but looking at her skill multipliers at level six here, they do seem to be rather high. I'll hold back any sort of positive or negative opinions for now. The one thing that seems to not scale with death at all are her normal attacks. I'm going to guess somewhere in her constellations, her normal attacks starts scaling with death. Her C1 honestly sounds a little strange past the first sentence. The first sentence basically being a 50% AOE increase of her doll's attacks. The rest of it essentially removes the requirement to having a Geo Construct Maker like Albedo or Zhongli. Her 20% Geo damage bonus and the extra doll summoned will trigger as long as you have one other Geo in your team, even if that Geo does not make a Geo Construct. I guess I just think it's weird because like the Geo Construct part was seemingly an important part of her kit and they're just like, eh, well, okay, you don't need a Geo Construct Maker now. But yeah, I guess it does open up team possibilities a little bit. You know, you could maybe take like a standard Ito team or something. C2 is essentially a buff to her elemental burst. After doing burst, a different doll will appear to do an attack. This doll will come and go doing attacks every three seconds for the next 10 seconds. We get three attacks here. These attacks will deal 170% of the standard doll's damage. So quite a bit more. C3 is talent levels for her skill, which I think is good. That's her most important in my opinion. With C4, you can summon that same doll from C2, but it works a bit differently. These are definitely closer to coordinated attacks. After using her elemental skill and then doing a normal attack with her or pressing E to swap to the next character, the next normal charged or plunging attacks will make this doll appear and do coordinated attacks. Again, like with C2, we can only have three of these attacks per skill cast. C5, of course, talent levels for her burst. And as predicted, unfortunately, all the way at C6, the last sentence here does indicate that her normal attacks will be increased by an amount equal 
equal to 235% of her def, which then makes her truly split scaling across the board. But besides that, also very important is that her elemental skills cooldown is decreased by 12 seconds after doing one of the follow-up attacks. So yeah, her C6 is really crazy. I mean, she gets a G infusion for five seconds, but with now essentially a four second cooldown on, on her elemental skills, she can have G infusion forever. Unfortunately, this doesn't necessarily increase the power of C4 because it'll still have a 15 second cooldown on that. So yes, definitely becomes a pure and full main DPS at C6. Before C6, I would probably more classify her as a sub DPS or off field DPS. But yeah, thoughts on Constellation. Honestly, none of them sound that good until C6. Though, I mean, C2 does sound like you get a decent little damage increase after a burst. But yeah, I'll of course have more thoughts when I do this D6 R5 video. We do of course have her signature weapon, but for raising mode, I like to stick to four stars. Right off the bat, I do feel like Cinnabar Spindle will be incredible for her. Most of her damage is coming from elemental skill pretty much all the way up until C6. It was an event weapon and it's possible that a lot of people watching this don't even have it. I feel like Festering Desire, another even older event weapon, would be good as well. Skill damage and crit rate, but if you have Festering, you probably have Cinnabar and I would just rather go with that, honestly. After looking around also at the forgeable weapons, there doesn't seem to be many other good four star options. They all have one problem or the other. Wolf Fang from the new Battle Pass weapons would be pretty good, but it is a Battle Pass weapon. There aren't even that many good like other five stars because a lot of them require you to do normal attacks and stuff and how I see her before C6 is just doing an elemental skill and swapping out pretty much. Maybe a burst if you have it. So we're honestly just going to go with Cinnabar. I usually don't really consider three stars, but Harbinger would be actually quite good. 28% crit rate at R5 as long as you're above 90% HP. So probably not really in a Farina team, but you also get some crit damage there. Overall, it is kind of a cracked three star weapon if you don't have anything else. In terms of artifacts, this at least seems pretty obvious to me, and that is Golden Troop. Maybe Navia's signature set, depending on your team and if you are doing a lot of crystallize. I'd go Hunter set at C6 if you have Farina in your team. Husk would still be an incredible set for her if you haven't gotten around to farming the new sets. I would imagine at least it does sort of rival Golden Troop, especially if you built her really well and are doing good damage with your ultimate as well. Because, uh, you know, Golden, Golden Troop is only skill damage. Husk is death and geo damage bonus, so it applies to everything. With that being said, I have a lot more Golden Troop than Husk, so that's what we're going with. She can fully take advantage of the four-piece set and 70% elemental scale damage. Again, before C6, she shouldn't be on the field that often. In terms of stats, since she scales less with attack than death, we're gonna mostly be focusing on death, especially because you actually get more. 58% death for a max sans versus 46% attack for a max sans. Outside of that, pretty much standard DPS stats, crit rate, crit damage. If you do get some attack rolls, it's not even bad. She will get more damage from it. Unlike pure death or attack scalers, which is again, my optimist side here. Jesus Christ, I'm raising this new plume. It's currently has nine crit rate and 19 death. This is actually insane. I shouldn't have said, oh no, there it goes crit rate again. Literally perfect. I mean, yeah, we do have a useless EM and a flat death, which isn't as good, but I'm really happy with that actually. That unfortunately will not roll the same way on my real account. We only have one death sands, it's not great. Uh, so we'll come back to that. Maybe it'll be our off piece. We of course do want a geo damage goblet. We'll see if we have an on piece here. We do have two of them. Um, neither of them are particularly good, but this one does at least have death percent. So we're going to enhance it, see how it rolls here. And then flat attack. That's probably one of the worst things it could be. Uh, let's turn that off actually, kind of annoying and just get it to 16 or 20. E. Okay, damn. Let's just try this one. May as well. Maybe the fourth hidden sub is uh, HP percent. <laughs> I think the death sands I have is actually better. It at least has some crit damage on it, I guess. Here's a plus eight crit damage circlet I actually gave up on because it rolled into death like twice. Uh, but actually could be quite good here. Let's check. Uh, it just went to HP and attack. I hope that one actually does roll differently, but all things considered, it's actually still not horrible. Some crit rate, a little bit of death. Post recording Moga here, I thought it'd be kind of funny to try and find it on my real account and see how it rolls. Ah, here it is. 21 def, 21 EM, crit rate, def. I remember it only went to crit rate and def, so uh, okay, we start with a def. Start with another def. Oh my God, this is real now. Hold on. Oh, we got a flat def in there, but another def percent, I guess that's fine. I would have liked at least one or two crit rate rolls. We have three levels to go though. And final roll, ah, more EM, which is completely useless for her. I mean, definitely not as good. Uh, but then we also had the plus eight circlet. Yes, here we go with crit rate and def on it. And it almost only went to flat attack and HP. So, and we're gonna try and one shot it. Hold on. I literally just asked for one crit rate roll, please. No, come on. I mean, 19 def, it's whatever, I guess. And it 
Still has one roll into crit rate. Yeah, I know. Maybe it is slightly better than the one we rolled, I think. But yeah, okay. Back to other me. So we're going off piece Geo Goblet. We found one with 14 crit rate, which I think is good since we uh, do lack a little bit currently and probably still with only 58%. We could take this crit rate off of Benny. It has 20 crit damage and 13 def. I think we'll do that and then probably arrange our substats a little bit. Got this off piece with 21 crit damage and still a bit of crit rate. That's not looking horrible now. Not really impressive either, but it's fine. We also do have 2k def. I kind of thought we would have more def, actually, considering we have Cinnabar. She is still level 70, and for those that keep up with my videos, uh, I know I flip-flop between raising standards and such. It's just kind of based on feel, I guess. But yeah, I'd say she's pretty much good to go, as good as I can make her anyway. Talking about team, since we are playing with her at C0, some sort of Geo construct would be good. I really like my Zhongli because you can also provide, you know, res decrease. Albedo would be another option. There might be a few others. I do actually kind of want to figure out what else counts as a geo construct that's pretty easy to test i'm kind of assuming this does really uh but we'll see here in a second yes indeed ningguang's little thing does the, this little thing here the little flag let's give it a look no okay what about his burst or Yunjin's burst. Any of those? Also no. Me personally though, I'd probably just go good old Zhongli. Also it's pretty much just brought to my attention that Ito's bowl actually counts as a Geo construct as well. As you can see, we summoned the second doll. We don't actually try much of an Ito team because I wasn't quite aware of this while recording, unfortunately. We will definitely explore it for God mode though because our summons were absolutely atrocious and so she'll most likely be C0 anyway. Essentially for these last two spots, we can pick pretty much anyone. Both of these characters are very universal. My standard Ito team, we could replace Binny with Goro or something, but Binny's 1000 attack, even though def is better on these guys, is still very hard to beat. We could go Sing Cho Hu Tao, also known as the double nut, Typically, Albedo was here instead of Chiori, but they kind of do work in a similar way. Mostly though, for now, I am just kind of curious about the damage Chiori is doing and not necessarily doing some full rotations to start with. So we are gonna go to good old Masanori. It has been a while. Just to kind of see what she's doing at default and see how much Benny's uh, buff actually helps her. So we are gonna like get a Zhongli shield. Like we need the pillar there. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, try that real, real quick. Unfortunately, not a critical, um, but as you can see, those pets over there are, are attacking pretty uh, frequently. Um, no crits there, but like I did see some over 10Ks. Yeah, 16 and 12 there. Cause like I said earlier, her pets actually last longer than the cooldown of her skills. So uh, we can have those pretty much constantly. Obviously if we don't have a Zhongli pillar, we only summon one. And of course we don't get that 20% geo damage bonus. So as you can see, even just that one is doing quite a bit less damage. They also do have a very long range, like they're way over there, but still attacking. But yeah, with pretty much just a Zhongli pillar here, we are getting like 15K per hit there. Uh, pretty consistently actually. That is while she's off the field with Golden Troop though. Uh, which will increase our, our damage a little bit more. You can see when she's on field, we're only getting um, now 16k. One of them is slightly less. Cinnabar Spindle has a 1.5 second cooldown on the elemental skill damage buff based on def. There might be a way to sort of time the dulls so where you are only hitting every 1.5 seconds or later because their interval is 3.6. Unfortunately, when you summon them at the same time, they kind of hit one after the other and then wait those like 3.6 seconds to hit again. I'm not sure there's a good way around that, but we're gonna try. So, I mean, what we could do is summon one and then go get a Zhongli pillar and the second one will, will be summoned automatically. But like, unless you're some kind of god at timing, it's going to be pretty RNG. Um, but yeah, we're getting 12 to 16k criticals depending on if Cinnabar is actually triggering or not. I do want to see what the difference is with Binny boost because she does primarily scale with death but also attack. And the fact Binny gives us a flat 1000 or so, doubling our attack might be pretty impressive. So let's go ahead and give that a try. Uh, we're just gonna, yeah, do that. Nothing else really. Um, I saw an 18. Okay, 20. Okay, he's blocking. 16. It doesn't do as much as I thought it would, honestly. So we saw that the uh, Cinnabar buffed one was doing about 20 and the unbuffed one was doing about 16, which still isn't bad, especially if your actual main DPS can take advantage of Vinny as well. But anyway, yeah, I guess I wouldn't really focus on that too much. A Navia team is a little tough with C0 Chiori because we kind of need Zhongli there or Albedo or Ningguang doesn't matter. It's just that we can't really have Vinny because he doesn't provide enough element to 
create a lot of crystallize, but let's try and make it work anyway. But yeah, some sort of off field from the four main elements like Shanling, Singcho. I think Yolan would be pretty good because she can also give a damage boost. So we'll, we're we're going to try her. Plus, Navia is missing out on 20% attack from her second passive here. But yeah, let's uh, give good old Liam a try, I guess. Uh, keeping all that in mind anyway. Let's go ahead and do her ultimate as well, I suppose. Should have gotten Yolan's ultimate before starting, probably. Oh, well. N Navia died from something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one didn't go very well. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not even sure why we're trying that. So to be honest, I just probably wouldn't do a Navia team with her at C0. At C1, it definitely works perfectly fine because Navia counts as the second Geo in that case. So I guess actually thinking about it, C1 is pretty good, but it's almost like fixing a problem she shouldn't have had. I don't know how else to say that, but yeah. Outside of Crystallize for a Navia team, she doesn't do any reactions, which means I think we are going to try, you know, sort of an old meta Hu Tao team. Nowadays, you know, it's all the Freenas and all that, but one we actually mentioned a little bit earlier, Singcho Hu Tao. All right, let's go ahead and give this another try here. We're basically just going to do our E and uh, swap out. Oh man, I have to get used to that though. I just swapped out normally instead of just pressing E again. Um... Like I said, that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Are we actually getting any Vaporize? I'm not sure. She probably does have more Geo than Albedo did, so it is possible that, like, not even Singcho can keep up with it. No, I think it's actually working now, maybe. I did just make sure my Hu Tao was built okay, but she's still not doing anything uh, crazy here though. I also should remember Liam does have like 3 million HP So she did die, but Liam is also almost dead. She always burst just did like 23 K So not super impressive for a burst, but honestly, I don't feel like her burst ever will be impressive unless you Specifically buff her for it or you're in an Ito team with like Goro. That's already buffing geos I think that is something we should try. So I guess it'd be something like this. Again, at C1, I probably would replace Zhongli with like Benny, but I think even so, this will be a pretty good team. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and start this up now and then uh, go and get Chiori stuff in there. Maybe we'll try and do her burst as well. Now, oh, okay, no, it's taking way too long, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, our Ito's not going to do any extra damage with Chiori in the team. She's not really boosting anyone besides herself. She is definitely not really a buffer. She's just, like, a sub-DPS, sort of off-field DPS. We can try her burst now. It definitely did a lot more, like, nearly 50k, which honestly isn't even that bad for being level 70 still. Oh my god. Liam just, like, one-shots. That's crazy. But yeah, this is probably closer to the team I would take if I had to keep her at C0. That is halfway just because I like my Ito team, but, you know, she can actually start to do some pretty good damage with Goro there. I definitely think she would be more interesting in general at C1. Again, it definitely does open up some options when you don't need one of those Geo Construct makers. We will explore some more for God Mode, but for now, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know what you think about Shiori in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.